morning, beloved, and welcome to our Sunday morning Bible class. We will continue on reformatting the mind. Could I hear you say it with me? Reformatting the mind. Yeah, we're dealing with the mind and the, the importance of having the mind formatted properly. Now I want to read a scripture, and if you will turn with me, please, in your Bibles to the book of Proverbs, chapter 4. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23. And it reads, Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Keep your heart with all diligence. I want to read a few translations of the same statement. The rendering, the American version went to the defenders in. The same way, actually, keep thy heart with all diligence for all of it are issues of life. Basic English. And the keep watch over your heart with all care so you will not lie. Common English. More than anything, you guard and protect your mind for life flows from it. The complete Jewish Bible. Above everything else, guard your heart. For it's the source of life's consequences. I like that. There are translations. Keep thy heart more than anything that is guarded, for out of it are the issues of life. English standard version. Keep your heart with all diligence, for from it flow the springs of life. Good news translation. Careful now. Careful how you think. Your life is shaped by your thoughts. Um, let me see what else we have. God's Word translation says, Guard your heart more than anything else, because the source of your life flows from it. Hebrew names version. Keep your heart with all the intents, for out of it is the wellspring of life. Jubilee. The Jubilee Bible says, above all else, guard thy heart, for out of it flows the issues of life. Same thing. Um, what does he have? The message Bible. Keep vigilant watch over your heart. That's where life starts. I like some of these renderings. New Century Chant version. Careful what you think, because your thoughts turn your life. New International Reader's Version, above everything else, guard your heart, is where your life comes from. All these translations, they have one thing in common, and that's the importance of watching over your heart. Why is it so important to watch over the heart? Why? Because the Bible says, as you think, as we think in our hearts, so are we. As we think in our hearts. But so the exhortation is to guard it. Why we need to, what we need to guard? What goes into it? Because whatever goes into it becomes the basis from which your life operates. Now remember, the heart, as we looked at, is a subconscious this really can be considered a subconscious mind. We're not talking about the heart that uh, and, and it, it's, it's in a spiritual sense because listen, man is spirit, soul, and body. Amen. Yeah, amen. If a snake, let's leave the body first because that's easier to understand. If a snake or you you in um, some poison is ingested, guess what happens? If some form of poison is ingested, it will not kill you unless it gets to the heart. When a snake bites somebody, it goes into the bloodstream. And listen, 
as long as you can keep it from the heart. That's why in some cases they say if it, you're bitten on the hand, the blood is bitten to or a torn key, and so it prevents the blood, not the vein, or prevents you from getting to the heart. Because it gets the heart, it's going to get Or it becomes lethal as long as it gets to the heart. It might cause swelling in other places, but as long as it gets to the heart, that's where the trouble is. Because the heart is that vital organ in the body. Listen, that is responsible for the distribution of blood, which is light to all other parts of the body. You understand? Now think of the heart in the same context as in this realm of the spirit. The subconscious mind is considered to be heart. Now whatever comes from there, now look at this. The heart, as long as it gets in the heart, the heart won't filter anything in it. Your heart won't filter anything. It does not. There are filters before it. Things that filter the blood that gets there. But the heart, as long as the blood gets in there, it's going to distribute it to the other parts of the body. The, the, all the heart does is pumps the blood. Whatever blood gets in it, it's going to pump. It will not consider that it's not good blood to pump. I can't pump it. It will pump it. Similarly, the subconscious mind works as a heart. Whatever gets in it is going to pump it into your life. It will not consider that this is not good for your life. It will still pump it into our lives. So what we need to do is to guard what gets in. Because whatever gets in becomes our lives. Whatever gets into our hearts, into our subconscious mind, becomes the basis from which we think or we will operate, from which we will speak. Remember we looked at both of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaking, and we looked at what is your mouth saying. Not what you are really saying, what is my mouth saying. It's because what we are saying and what our mouths are saying are two different, maybe two completely different things. What I'm saying is what I consciously think of. What my mouth says is what I don't think of. My mouth just speaks. That's why Jesus is always in the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Therefore, guard the heart because from the heart will flow or overflow through my mouth. When it overflows through my mouth, it determines my life. The Bible says, guard it, preserve it. Watch what gets into the heart. Watch. What gets into your heart? Now, what can get into your heart? Information. I was talking with somebody the other day and they said to me, I go to any church. You know, I listen to anybody. Oops. So dangerous. It is so dangerous to listen to anybody. Because even Jesus said to his disciples, beware of the leaven, the scribes, and Pharisees. And they thought he was talking about their food. No, he was talking about the doctrine. So you have to be careful of a person's doctrine. As long as they utter something that is from religion or tradition, it's not from the word of God, it's dangerous. Amen. But I say it again, it's dangerous. Amen. There will be some celebrated ministers who uh, society respects them because they have long, large congregations or whatever. Mm -hmm. But if you listen carefully, yeah. their teaching may not be based on the word of God. Mm -hmm. It may, as a matter of fact, it may be opposite to the word of God. It may be the traditions of men. Mm -hmm. As a matter of Jesus, the, 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 the scribes and the Pharisees, they preach for doctrine, their the traditions, and they make it doctrine. So, guard your heart. Guard your heart from religious people, from religious, from religion, from religious utterances. Guard it. Because if you don't, it seeps in. And Jesus said, a man sowed good seeds in his, in his ground, but while he slept, the enemy came and sowed, sowed the tears. So if you don't guard your heart and protect it, your garden, which is your heart, which will bring forth the fruit. The enemy can sow tears inside when you are not looking. So, 
watch what enters into the heart. People are, people are very concerned what enters into their mouth. As long as Jesus says, they can't even define you. What goes into their mouth can't define you. But what goes into the heart can define you. Because what goes into the heart, that's what determines your life, our lives. So, guard it from doctrine, from wrong doctrine. If it's not the word of God, then I need to say, it's not the word of God. I need to set a system in my life that unless it is verified from the word, I'm not receiving it. You see, you, you can set up those checks in your life. If it's not word, I'm not receiving it. No, how do I do that? Well, you have to be at the Bereans. The, the Bible said the Bereans were, Paul said they were very noble because everything they heard, they checked the scriptures to see if they were true. Now, as long as you adopt that attitude to say, let me check it to see if it's true, then it becomes a system by which you operate. You know, uh, it may not be a very nice practice, but uh, if somebody gives me something to eat, something to eat, I find a way to smell it. I find a way to smell it. As I may not even do it to so offend the person, but I find a way to smell it. And if my nose does not afford it, I don't eat it. So it has become a system in my life. I mean, it happens automatically. If somebody opens to something and I get away, and it has become so acute that if something will, to the average person, will go bad in the next two hours, I'll smell it now. It becomes so cute. So sometimes somebody went and said, that has turned the corner. And the person said, no, it's still good. It's still good. I said, no, it has turned the corner. I'm not going to eat it. Because that has become a check in my life. Similarly, if it's not a word, I'm not eating it. Amen. And that is a responsibility every person has to say, if it's not the word, I'm not receiving it. Now, many persons, and they consider who said it. And who said it doesn't matter? Who says it don't matter? Amen. Could I say that again? Who says it is of no importance? Only if God says it, then it's important. <laughs> well, you know, this great preacher said something. Oops. Please check the word and see if the word lines up with it. Please check the word and see if it was taken in the correct context. Please. For your safety, check the word. That's why I'm guarding my heart. So if I hear a statement, before it settles in my heart, the check in my life is, is that in the Bible? Is that according to the word? Yeah. And so my system, my, my subconscious will not absorb it unless it is verified as the word. Are you hearing this? Now many persons are carried away because somebody, some famous person said it. Some famous preacher said it. Well, it needs to be more than that. Amen? It needs to be more than a famous preacher said it. It must be that it is the word of God. I say to the congregation, don't even quote me. I'm not excited when people quote me and say, no, um, I'm quoting. You know, it's the same thing Archbishop said, please don't say that. It must be the word. My job is to guide you in the word. It's to guide you in the word. Or if I bring a prophetic word, or I bring a revelation straight from the throne, which you can hear, but then you need to see, does the revelation line up with the word of God? It's your responsibility to do that. That's why I allow you to challenge anything I say. You have a right to ask a question. See, we must not be like our poor parents who went to church and say, the pastor of a preacher preached today, man. What did he preach? But you can't even say what he said. You can't even say if what he said was in line with the word. And I must say, 
I heard a preacher preach, and when he was finished, I asked him, I said, could you show me that you were, the angle you were taking, could you verify that what he couldn't do? So whatever it is, must be according to what, must be agenda. That's how you're guarding your heart, because it's our religion. We need to guard your heart again. You need to guard your heart again from the world. The world's information. The psalmist said, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stand to be sinners, nor sit in the seat of the scorn, where his delight is in the word of God, in the word as he meditate and life. He does not walk in what? In the counsel of the ungodly. What's the counsel of the ungodly? Anything that is anti word is the counsel of the ungodly. Amen. Anything that is not word is the counsel of the ungodly. Can we just put it to the facts? You hear that? Anything that is not the word is the counsel of the ungodly. No, let me get let me set this in order. Somebody who we may consider the ungodly, may give us counsel that lines up with the word. Did you hear that? Yeah, yeah. Easy question. A donkey gave counsel to a prophet. The donkey was not, was not converted. But what he said was in line with the word. You can't curse whom God has not cursed. It's in line with the word. The Balaam's donkey said the right thing. So sometimes the ungodly, God will allow the ungodly to speak his word to us. Not their opinion. The ungodly may speak. God's word to us. Because like a donkey, God was trying to get this guy's attention. And a donkey had to say what God wanted to say. So unless it's God's word, it is ungodly constant. So let's, just, let's say you have a physical condition. You go to the doctor and doctor say it's strong enough. So go home and make you will. It's ungodly constant. Why? Because God says, I am the Lord, I eat it. So when a, when, a, when a doctor says, even though he has a piece in whatever, when he says it's in or it's terminal, it's ungodly. Yeah. When he said can't be healed, it's ungodly because he said, I am the Lord that he had all that disease. When a doctor, if a doctor says it's not possible this can be healed, it's ungodly. Why? Because the word of God says all things are possible to him that believe Amen. You understand what word God comes to it? No, but a doctor who may not give belief in me say, hey, you know what? Y'all are trying prayers. Mm -hmm. Or why you better go to the church because there's nothing else we can do. That, that's God the counsel. Why? Well, because the Bible says that in the sick among you, call the answer to charge. Yeah. And then pray the prayer of faith, and the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise them. So Amen. you follow what I'm saying? Yeah. So he says that. It's an ungodly cause. No, that's, that's amazing. Somebody has a condition. They can tell you all of the ungodly cause to control the condition. They can tell you how many persons died from it. All the symptoms, all of this. And they can't tell you five or five things God said about the sickness. Can't tell you five things. Somebody feels something is going wrong in their life, and then somebody says, somebody did something to you, somebody worked something, somebody did something to you. And they can tell you, I've been to five persons who said that. And you ask them what God said about this. I don't know. I can tell you what God said. God said, one, no way to form against you shall prosper. Every time to rise against you in judgment shall be condemned. God says, I give you power 
the German serpents and scorpions will bow while they bow the enemy, and nothing shall by any enemies harm them. It's church people I'm talking to you know. It's church people who believe somebody works on the internet. And nothing by shall by, by any means harm them. Some persons have a they can't eat this or they can't eat that. No, they choose not to they can't. They say if I eat this, this will happen to me. Well, who told you that? Well, my mother told me about it, and I this is my experience. Well, what the word of God says. In verse Timothy chapter 4, hear what it says. Every creature of God is good, and nothing is to be refused if it is received with thanksgiving, for it is sanctified by the word of God by prayer. As the word of God says, Jesus said, What goes into the mouth can defy you. What comes out of the mouth to defy The apostle Paul says, Eat whatever is sold in the marketplace and ask no question for conscience sake. So well, I don't know what about that, but my grandmother told me, your grandmother is ungodly. Excuse me. Please, may I apologize for saying that? But I must say it again, she's ungodly. You have to apologize to her that same time and then apologize to you. So your feelings will not be hurt too bad. Too bad. <laughs> now you have to choose who you believe. You see, you're guarding your heart because whatever you believe will affect your life. What's happening to you is because of what? It's in your heart, what's in your subconscious. Your life responds that way to every situation, every circumstance. And sometimes you think, why is this happening to me? Because that's what is that's what's issuing from your heart. Nobody likes them. Okay, that would be your reality. You know, I don't have luck with people. Okay. That's in your heart. If you guard your heart from that, that was, you have to reform your mind, but guard your heart from people saying that, you know, parents and the rest of the children. You all don't know, but you don't like you all already. You know? You know, you all don't have to with people. And you're a good man, and your mother didn't still tell you, oh, you know, you don't have to with people. And you receive that. When it comes to time, listen, let me show you something at this area of guarding your heart. I said this before, some of you may have heard it, but I'll say it again, some of you may have never heard it. Before I got converted, I believed in old wise fables. Old wise fables. So, one of the things, if I dreamt dry coconuts, I would have prepared for hard, hard times. And the amount of coconuts I dreamt will determine how many months of hard times I'll see. So if I dreamt four dry coconuts, I would be worried and saying, oh boy, four my months of hard times. And guess what? Like clockwork it came. Then I got converted. And I read it first and it says, shun all wise fables, refuse them. Refuse it. No, I was not aware that when I dreamt that, I was giving access into my heart, giving it access into my heart, which will destroy my life. So when I saw that, and the next time I dreamt dry coconuts, I refused. I said, I refuse that. God promised me a good life. God promised to prosper me, to give me an expected end. I refuse to accept that. The only thing God has in store for me is good. I'm blessed in my world, I'm blessed in my community. And I went to confessing all the scriptures concerning being blessed. Two things happened. One, the three months never came. Did I tell you it never came? It never came. The heart turned never came. And two, I never dreamt it again. Do you hear me? So, some people say, well, I know if ever my left hand scratch me, I know I'm going to spend the money, okay? As long as you receive that, beloved, that will be your life because it's in your heart. And will miss you out. So you need to guard your heart from it. You, you follow? Protect your heart. Now, the one thing that can stand the guard is the word of God. The only thing that can stand the guard over your heart 
is the word of God. It has to be something bigger than the opinions of men, and that's the word of God. That's what stands guard. That's what says, you're illegal. All identify yourself. If you're not, a, if you if you're not according to the word, then you can't gain access. Guard your heart. There are persons who will come to you and say, "You know what? Brace yourself. The economy is going to get worse." If they say that to you and you don't guard your heart and say, "Listen to me." My life is not strong by the economy. The covenant of thousand, my father is wealthy. The covenant of thousand hills belong to him. God has a plan for my life to prosper me and to keep me in good health. If you don't kind of guard your heart with that, then you prepare and brace yourself and your heart for a rough economy, for rough times. Guess what will happen? It will be your experience. It shall be your experience. Protect your heart. Look at me. Protect your heart from the thoughts running around your head. Nice. Because whenever you have time, thoughts run around your head. Especially when you're alone. And I am down, and oh, my soul is so clean. And I'll stop, and my heart burns at me. You know that? When you're down, when you're by yourself, when you are on your pity pot, when your song is nobody, the trouble. Nobody knows. You want me to sing a song for you? Nobody can. <laughs> All the trouble you see. Because they have their own problems. Yes. And then you say, well, nobody cares about me. Satisfy, settle your heart and know Jesus cares about you. He loves you with an everlasting love. He cares about you. So you don't have to burden other people to care. He loves you. He cares about you. He's concerned about you. So when, the, when, the, see, when these thoughts run, run, run rough, shot, rough shot through your mind, and you allow them to see them, you know, listen, you could just get to have a thought. You know, somebody may have said something to you, or they may have passed you, and you're wondering, they passed me straight, I wonder why. And then some thought comes on. They hate me, you know. And then you dwell on, you dwell on it and develop it. It settles into your heart that they hate you. Beloved, listen to me. Try as you may, it will become your reality. No matter what a person tries, as long as you settle that in your heart, as long as you hold fast to that and sit, sit into your heart, it will bring forth everything in your life to manifest what you believe. Yeah. And you will say, I know it. I know it. I know this how they think of me. And the person is not even thinking about you much more to think of you now. The person was thinking of the whole problem. You assume it was about you. You know how many times persons walk in a room and people are laughing on some joke that passed and still walking, people say, you are laughing at me. Mm -hmm. Or they get, they get angry and say, see the see me they start laughing. And it's a joke that was, that was given before. And they're convinced now that since they saw me, they started to laugh. So they're laughing at me. They're making fun. Oh, and they started to think. And, and started to say things. And guess what? The person 
persons never had any view about you, never thought about you. But it seeks into your heart. You mark the faces, you mark the persons, and you label them in your heart, these are enemies. And then you develop further, this is how I should treat them. Some people write, some people regard it as a person because they laughed at something or But if you're real funny, close to that, funny. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know what you mean, man? They're not laughing at you. They're laughing at what you have on. If it is a like this, you come up, come to church with a tickers. I mean, somebody will say, okay. <laughs> Or a bell bottom. Okay, go help this go. But you get offended because you think if they don't like you, don't have no problem with you. So guard the heart. You see, the Bible says, with the heart man believeth. If you don't guard it, then you will forever have unbelief. You have to guard because you believe with your heart. What you do with your heart? Believe. What? Say, say it again. Say, say what we do. What you do with your heart? Believe. What? 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 Believe. No, it's so important. What, what people believe in? He said, "All things are possible to them that believe." So, believe turns your impossibility to possibility. Yes. Belief is what gives you miracles. Yes. So, guard your heart. Because if my heart is not guarded, it will never believe. Guard your heart from appearances. I mean appearances. Think about the children of Israel at Kadashmaya when they went in the spiral of the land. We said we they said we saw the giants mm -hmm. and they were big. Mm -hmm. And listen, in our own sight. We were grasshoppers, and so we were in their sight, in our own eyes. We were grasshoppers. Now, what went in their heart that they cannot deal with these people? They can, so we can't we can't fight them. We can't defeat them. Joshua and Caleb had guarded their hearts from the people's sides. How they guard their hearts from people's sides? They remember what God says, no man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. Mm -hmm. And as long as you name man, it, they weren't going to your signs. They are concerned as a man. Yeah. Now if you don't guard your heart from appearances, appearances will scare you. And not only scare you, it will seep into your heart and tell you and convince you. As long as your heart is convinced that it's impossible, that's impossible. All things, you will never believe the word of God. Many persons find it difficult to believe the word of God because of reason, logic. I don't know if that's possible. But you know what I like to look at? I like to look at what I call science fiction. Mm -hmm. And you just is real. I like to exercise my mind in the realm of the impossible. Because my Bible says all things are possible. Amen. So Superman to me is a real thing. Yeah. It's possible. Yeah. I think man, I can believe it's okay, I believe it's possible. I believe Spider-Man is possible. I'm guarding my heart. Yeah. Well, I'm guarding my heart from impossibility. Now some persons, they are on a scouting mission to find things that are impossible. <laughs> oh, God said all things are possible. Well, I can show you ten things that are not possible. I'm guarding my heart. I don't even want to know. <laughs> because let God be true. So I'm not going to ask you, say, well, tell me, I don't want to know. You keep them there in which you're ignorant yes. and still unbelievable. Me, 
I don't want to know. I know God says all things are possible. Because I don't know how it will can happen, that don't make it impossible. Look at somebody speak, oh, you don't know how it can happen. That don't make it impossible. And you are so stupid. Said and said, no, say you will be so stupid if you think. Because you don't know what can happen. If you say it's impossible. So I hope you're not stupid. That's what we do. Because they don't know what can happen. How it can happen. Say, it's not possible. Because they don't know how it can happen. How many things you don't know how, how it happens? But you see it in front of your eyes. We don't know how it happens. You know how babies fall in the womb? You know how two drops of water becomes a person? Have any idea? No. Nobody knows. What happens? Yes. You know how the waves and the how the thought works in your system? You have any idea? At what speed that the connections are made in your brain? Faster than the speed of light. Because you don't know what happens, does it? Does that mean it doesn't happen? It happens. I saw the other day uh, a story of a guy who didn't eat for 80 something years. Did never get or drank water. No, I'll be saying, that's madness. Not to me. Because I don't know how he did it. Say that's, that's, that's foolishness. You can go eat for 80 something days. Did the Bible say all things are possible? Why, why do you want to exclude that? If you just stop and think, you know, I'm really stupid because because they don't know what happened, it can happen. You see, and, and why people don't get miracles? Because they want to figure out how it's going to happen. And so if I can't figure out all the things that happen, then it can't happen. That's, that's, a, that's people's problem. The angel came to me and said, uh, You can see the son. Calls the name Jesus. Hey, hello, Mary. Uh, blessed are the Lord. Nice speech. I said, You can see the son. You get a son. The angel, you have trouble in us. What? What's the problem? I never had sense. I don't have sense. How this can be? The angel said, Don't worry, what motion company will shout. You know what she moved? It moved her into. Maybe if you said, Let it be to me according to this that I work. Let it be to me. In other words, let it happen, let it happen, let it happen. The word moved her into the realm of belief. You hear that? Immediately moved her into the realm of belief. She conceived the word and brought it forth. Brought him forward. All things are possible. So guard your heart. Because if you don't guard your heart, beloved. Jesus said all things are possible him that believe it. Jesus said in Mark 11 23, if you say to this mountain, be not removed, be cast in the sea. And do not no. doubt where. Yeah. But believe the way he says shall come to pass. You shall have whatever he said. You hear that? If you should he will, whosoever shall say to that mountain, to God the mountain, be thou removed and be cast into the sea. And do not doubt in his head. In his heart. No. You need to guard your heart. That doubt does not creep into your heart. Are you hearing this? God, guard your heart against doubt. How can I guard my heart against doubt? Well, one, let's just go at an example. Peter's coming. She's walking on water. I mean, Jesus is coming. The sea is rough. And Jesus is walking on the water. Well, 
you start the nice trip, you get a nice swag. Because you can't walk and walk on a rough sea unless you got a swag. So she's got a swag. And she said, it's a ghost. She said, no, it's not a ghost in me. No. Their hearts will not allow them to think that that's possible. So Peter said, if it's you, tell us to come. And she said, come. They were missing a beat. He took all the boat and started to walk. And then the Bible says, and then he saw the wings. He saw their appearance. When he saw the wind, you, you can't actually see the wind, but you saw what the wind was doing. Watch us. The Bible says he became afraid. And he sang. So here it is. You've got a word concerning something. You've got a prophetic word. You've got a word from God that God's going to do X, Y, Z in your life. But you see the wings. And your heart is not guarded. Say, God is not a man that he's alive. There's not a man that's repenting. God promises to be performing. So the word doesn't write to God in your heart. And the fear goes into your heart. And doubt goes in it. Then Jesus says, Oh, you little fear. Why is doubt? She said, Why are you doubting? Because he was walking. So here it is. Fear comes in. And doubt comes in because. Reason begins to analyze the situation and say, okay, you got a word that you will get this car, but you lost your job. How will you pay for the car? Then you got a word that you're going to cut, and you never got a word you pay for it. How you pay for the car? <laughs> so, fear comes in, don't come and say, you know what? Perhaps it's not God's time for me to have the car. So somebody who was lined up to give you a car changes the mind. Because you say, you know, you can't afford a car right now. You know you won't be able to afford the payments. You gotta worry you get a car. You put in the work of payments. So nobody will give me a car. A car, okay. As you think. So, you, so guess what? You said that, it will be a reality. Nobody will give you a car. They give you a dress, a shirt, not a car. <coughs> so you think nobody gives away cars? Yes, people give away cars, but you won't get one. Because that's what you said. That's what you believe. So God protect your heart. Because we love it. As you think will be your reality. As you think it will be your reality. So protect. Take it from your own views. So someday you may have some views. You need to say, it's a God's to God's word. It's my view, but it's in line with God's word. It's not in line with God's word. Where did I get this foolishness from? Don't allow the self in your heart and, and to control your life. So he said, and this is, this is what I feel. Can you build a philosophy of what you feel? <laughs> and what you feel is so wrong. So you, you shape your life from a feeling. I feel this person don't like me. And you terminate what could have been a fruitful and excellent friendship because you are a feeling. I know when I get a feeling it's always right. It must be right. Because you've affected your heart and all your heart flows your life. So your feeling becomes right because what you feel now becomes your life. And you begin this and you begin to project. An aura that makes the person more like you. But that's what you're projecting. That's what's in your heart. That's what you're projecting. The art is scientifically proof, so it's not a funny story. Yes. It has been photographed. Amen. Amen. If whatever you're thinking, it changes the color. So you project this, it's a, it's a magnetic field around every living human being. Amen. So when you think, you know what? <laughs> 
don't like me in this church. It will be a reality. I'm now going back to you because you don't like me in the church. I, I watch who is watching. And people looking at you and saying, this is a pretty woman. <laughs> but you're thinking there was just something wrong. Well, let me help you. Breaking news. If you were perfect, you would have been a Miss Diana. Since you were never Miss Diana, there's got to be something missing somewhere. <laughs> so relax yourself. Oh boy. Oh boy. So now Mrs. Soima, you know. Good, thank you. Good to see you in the office. So you always, you always thinking, they're looking at me, what are you thinking? Why you just, if you don't think they're thinking I'm so, me, when I walk, you look at me, they say, where's this good looking guy in all my life? Yeah. That's why I think people think. Yeah. Yeah. People think and think, say, you got a stench in Washington, has a slight resemblance of mine. Yeah. <laughs> I know for any time you think, well, you're looking at me, I'm thinking that I'm not good looking. What? I don't think so. Oh, you know, he's too dark. No, 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 no. I know that they're not chocolate. <laughs> 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 you can think whatever you want to do. <laughs> Right, Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get your attention to this time now. <laughs> Guard your heart. Protect it. <coughs> protect your heart. Beloved, protect your heart. You have to diligently protect it. In other words, I'm watching what goes in. Just like Paul said, whatsoever things are good, whatsoever yeah. things are pure, whatsoever things are good report, think on those things. In other words, that allow those things to slip in. Yes. Don't allow things that are not good and pure and have a good report, don't allow them to slip in. So whatever you think on, can slip into your heart. Whatever you think of, that's what slips into your heart. Whatever you meditate on, whatever because think you, as you think you meditate, so have you meditate on continually, has the ability to slip into your heart. Hence, we have our affirmation. We say that Amen. constantly, 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 and they slip into our heart. Guess what? What they did? Well, exit our mouths. And again, it's not what we say; it's what our mouths say. What does that mean? And when we consciously speak, we speak right. You know what? Like. Many persons, or at least one person in this church, uses profanity. It must be at least one person. I know not you, and the person may not even be here to me, but at least one person. Who when you come to church, you don't use it. When you're worshiping and you're saying and you're praying language, you don't use the profanity. It's when somebody performs, it's the torture box. Actually, that's what your mom says. <laughs> but it comes out your heart. Because something, sometimes when you really have a particular zone, the only thing you can get and explain what you really want to say is some French. <laughs> you agree? Yes, sir. I mean, yeah. You gotta get some French yes. <laughs> to read it. And if you don't say it, I mean, you think it. And there are times I had to just get, get some integral motion, put in my pocket. I can't say it, but, but, but it killed me. Then you just throw it away. But you want to say it, you, you understand? And I was in this conference in Jamaica, and he said, and then she's a professor, she was talking to the conference, and then she said, What are we going to say? I can't say it. On the side, Miguaya, Semiguaya, and so she went to Jamaican vernacular, and she began the, for the next half an hour, twenty minutes. I couldn't tell what she was saying because she go ya. You, you understand? Yes. Uh, you, you you follow? Yes. Sometimes you have a child who you talk to the side and, and 
you're not hearing, you can't say you're not hearing, you are saying, yes, I. You know what I'm saying? Yes, I. Because that brings out, you, you follow? Yes. That's because that's in your heart. So all the abundance of your heart, you want to speak. What, what is in my heart? It's, again, it's not what we say because we can we can say the right things in the right place at the right time. You know, if we're in a certain group, we can speak in a certain way. You understand? If I travel, like, like I'm in London or uh, in America, and I have to address the congregation, I'm in the South Midwest, just on a moment in the white shirt. Listen to me, I'm more English than English. Yes. Yes. I'm going to speak a certain way because I have to communicate with them. And then they'll ask me, Where were you from? Oh, that's my name. But we were not really preaching, Drum Ayahe. And you really want to say some song. I mean, you've got to get into your Chinese dialect. Some of you are embarrassed, but listen to me. So you just got to say, God say, in a Chinese style. You, you understand? So, so we, we, we sing the song, he's working it out. I mean, it do not really sound the, the work. You gotta come that he work in it. You somehow got to drop the, drop the R. He's working it out right now. You gotta say, work, because that, that gives you the real feel of the way. So, as the, we think in our heart, so God, protect, defend. Regiment. How do we got? We serve the word as the gatekeeper, the word of God as the gatekeeper of our hearts. Yes. The word of God has to be the gatekeeper of your heart. So if I meditate something, if I'm thinking of something, because beloved, your mind works like that, you can't help it. If you meditate it long enough, if you want to see into your heart. So what happens? When it gets there, the word checks and says, this is not according to the word of God. And then you may be around and say, no, this is not according to the word of God. Because if it goes in, it becomes the basis from which your life will flow. The heart is the subconscious. The heart in the realm of the spirit is the subconscious mind. Subconscious mind does not reason. It don't reason. It don't think. Subconscious mind is like your phone. If you type a message intended for Mary, but you accidentally send sent it to G, it does not reason that this is not intended for G. So let me don't send it. And in order to say, you know what, the message you sent, really I know you made a mistake, you just not do that. After you send it, you say, oh Lord, I sent the wrong message. The wrong person. But the subconscious mind does not reason. Whatever you put in, you input it, it comes out. As a matter of fact, you don't know the difference between a truth and a lie. You don't know the difference between what's real or what's imaginary. It does, it cannot tell the difference. And whatever is, it is given, it finds a way to manifest. So whatever I put inside will manifest in my life. So the only thing that stands guard is the word of God, because the word of God is right. They even say the word is simple. It is right. It is true. It's infallible. So therefore, when that stands guard. Regardless of whatever else I may have meditated on, and I find my mind wandering on, the Word of God says it's not in line with the Word of God. It's not in line with God's promises. So it checks it and prevents it from becoming established, from becoming established in my heart and issue forth as my life.
somebody's financial stake, whatever it is, it's not the job, it's the it has nothing to do. Let me, let me rephrase. No. It has nothing to do really true with the country you live in, with the financial situation in the country. It has nothing to do with that. It simply has to do with the power you think. Your lack of your abundance is based on what you think, nothing else. So, you know, you can't tell me that because the country is hard. <laughs> That's your thinking. That will be your reality. I will answer you and say, there are persons living in the same country. You have two hands like you, two feet like you, two eyes, two ears, a head like you. They may not even get qualified as you, but they don't say it's hard. How come? Because that is not in their hands. If they had, oh beautiful, yes. oh my lovely dear Jiva. You understand? In their heart, that's you. Gaya, but can you speak? Yeah, nice. That's your perspective. Have you ever seen that you have relatives that people come in to you and say, boy, this person is such a great person. And you say, I can't answer this question. You know that? I mean, I had this friend, and this father and I were good friends. I mean, this father was my good friend, and the two of them had long heads. This one had long heads. I mean, this boy and his father can't be dead. And I'm wishing, sometimes I wish the guy was my father. Because we have a, we sit and we talk, and I can ask him questions, and, and, and he said, what's wrong with this boy? You know, I believe the greatest sick person that ever walked the earth, female singer, was with me. And don't tell me I'm wrong, I'm right. And I'm thinking, boy, he was with me. I'm going to be wrong, being with the beat Go to your mind, Bobby. Or it is a lynch. Let me see if it's right. Or it is. I ain't got it. I ain't got it. It was a lynch. But well, listen. So, it depends on how do I think. So I have to guard. Protect my heart. Protect my heart. If for nothing else, think of this. All things, Proverbs, uh, Mark 9, 23. All things are possible to him that And with what we believe? The heart. Man believes. With the heart we believe. So if I don't guard it, unbelief takes it over. And if unbelief takes over my heart, then I have to live in a realm where all things are impossible. 